Hello, I'm Kamal Witch and I welcome you to this video clip which is based on module 3 of my book Let's Learn 3G in 10 days. In this module, we will learn few basics of WCDMA Air Interface. Wideband CDMA is a multiple access technology which allows us to use the same radio resources for several subscribers by using different codes for each user. Alternative schemes are frequency division multiple access, time division multiple access and orthogonal frequency division multiple access. In CDMA technology, several users are allocated the same frequency at the same time but their signals are separated by codes and these codes are very carefully selected and managed by RNC. In the example shown here, there are three users and they are simultaneously using the same frequency but each user has its own code. So we are good to go. They will not interfere with each other as long as their powers are controlled. Let's talk about timing. In UMTS, everything is organized in 10 millisecond radio frames. A radio frame is the smallest time duration for which radio resources can be allocated to a user. One radio frame is further divided into 15 slots. Hence, each slot equals 10 by 15 or 2 by 3 milliseconds. One slot is that duration after which layer 1 control information, for example, power control command, is signaled between UE and node B. There is no need of complicated hierarchy like multi-frame, super-frame, hyper-frame as we have in GSM. For HSDPA and HSUPA, there is another term we should know called as subframe. This subframe is made up of three slots. In HSPA, the resources can be allocated to 2 milliseconds and 2 milliseconds is equal to one subframe. In any code division multiple access system, codes are very important. Let's take a look at the codes used in UMTS. There are two types of codes, generalization codes and scrambling codes. Generalization codes perform the bandwidth spreading by multiplying a user's slow input signal with a very fast code signal. The input signal can be 12 kilobits per second, 64 kilobits per second or any arbitrary number depending on service. But generalization code is always 3.84 million chips per second where chip is another name for bit of code signal. Scrambling code does not cause any change to the bit duration or bandwidth. It simply superimposes transmitter's identity on already spread signal. Next picture will elaborate more about code usage. Let us consider a node B with two sectors. In this figure, all the downlink signals in the left cell are scrambled with scrambling code 1 in the right cell with scrambling code 2. This implies that in downlink, scrambling codes are used to identify the cell. Downlink scrambling code of a cell is similar to BCCH ID of 2G and PCI of LD. Now let us introduce two UEs in the right cell and we can see that they are using different scrambling codes in uplink. This means node B will separate signals of UE1 from signals of UE2 with the help of uplink scrambling codes. Hence, in uplink scrambling codes are used as UEID. Uplink scrambling codes should not be repeated within one RNC area. But don't worry, we have got 16 million scrambling codes in uplink. That means we will never run out of them. Now let's go further and introduce two more UEs in left cell. From this example, we can say in downlink channelization codes are used as user's identity on physical layer. These codes often face congestion in high loaded cells. Therefore, RNC has to very carefully allocate these codes. By observing the uplink behavior of users in right cell, we can say that in uplink channelization codes are used to separate control and data channels from the same UE. Now there are still many details about codes which I cannot cover in this short video. For that, I would recommend you to download my ebook from my website wiresandwaves.net. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I got some more good stuff lined up for you in the next module. So hope to see you there after a short break. Thank you.